Hello friends and welcome to your very first lesson of Financial Algebra, which is Unit 1, Lesson 1. So today we're going to be talking about discretionary and essential expenses. So one of the things I like to do with the lessons, I just start to like to start out with a quote. So today's quote is, a bargain ain't a bargain unless it's something you need. So that's going to be something that we really think about today as we're talking about our, our essential versus discretionary expenses. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using in the lesson here. So for this one, the first vocabulary that we're going to be talking about is gross income. So a lot of you guys who are already employed know that if you get paid, let's say $20 an hour, that doesn't mean that if you work two hours, you're going to receive $40 because for the majority of our employments, taxes are going to be taken out. So the gross income is going to account for what we get paid um, before taxes are taken out. And then the money that we actually receive after taxes are taken out is called disposable income. And so that's going to be the income once the taxes are removed. So when we think about the money that we're given when we're working, we want to think about essential expenses and discretionary expenses. So an essential expense would be an expense that cannot be eliminated from your day to day life. So we're talking about things like food. We're talking about things uh, like clothing, like shelter, all right, things that you need to function on a day to day basis. Versus the discretionary expense is cost or goods or services that are non essential, okay? You need shoes, yes, but do you need $90 boots? Maybe not. That might be more of a discretionary fund. Going on vacation would be a discretionary expense. Going to the movies, things like that, that are not essential to your existence. So some might argue shopping is. I don't know. Depends on the person. Um, so some of the math vocabulary that we're going to be talking about for today does apply um, to stuff that you've done in the past. You've probably done something with mean, mean, and mode all the way up to this point. Um, so mean is what you're going to see the most of. You know, the mean is the same as average. You're going to see that used the most. Um, and so what the mean is, it's finding the sum of the scores and divide by the number of the scores. So it's calculating out the average. The next is going to be the median. So that's going to be used when the mean appears to be skewed. And we're going to talk about how you can identify if it appears to be skewed. And so you might also hear this called the middle score. And the final one we're going to be talking about today is the mode. And that's the whatever uh, number is appearing the most, that is the mode. So that's the most frequently used number. So let's talk about this first problem. So here it says, Alina is trying to budget her discretionary funds. She knows that getting a coffee is part of that fund. She normally goes to Caribou and gets a medium cold press for $2.75. She pulled, oh, that, pulled her coworkers to see how much they typically spend. Their costs per cup were $285, $215, $195, $305, and $240. What is the mean value of the coworkers' coffee? And is Caribou the best option? So what I want to do first is I want to add all of those prices up. So $285 plus $215 plus $195 plus three dollars plus 205 plus 240 so i want to see if what she's spending is the best option so i count there's one two three four five six different co-workers she pulled so i'm going to add all of those up and i'm going to need to divide it by six which is the number of people that she pulled well when i take that top and i add all of those together i get 14.4 and then i'm going to be dividing by six and when I do that, I get $2.40. Okay, well, we notice that she spent $2.75. Is that the best option? No. So Caribou is not the best option because it's more expensive than the average of her coworkers. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem. So here it says Addie monthly water bill so far, sorry about that, is $27.31.30. 26, 25, 27, 37, and 33, 20, 32, 28, and 26. What does her last month bill need to be to have an average of $29? So that is the average. So that's what we're actually going to put on the other side as our average. So what we need to do is add all of these numbers up here. I'm going to run out of space. I will put that average back here in a little bit. Okay, 33 plus 32 plus 28 plus 26. Now we're going to have an additional value that we don't know, and we want that to be equal to 29. 
So we need to take that and we need to divide it by how many numbers we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then our last little that we don't know is our 12. So we're going to divide that by 12. So we need to be able to solve this. So to be able to solve this, to figure it out, what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of the fact that I'm dividing by 12. So to do that, I'm going to actually multiply both sides by 12. And when I do that, I can cancel the 12 out on the bottom here. So over on this side, I have 12 times 29, which is going to give me 348. And that's going to be equal to 322 plus x. That's what you get when you add all of those numbers together. So now I just need to solve this for x. So I'm going to subtract the 322 from both sides. And when I do that, I get that x is equal to $26. So that means her last bill needs to be $26 in order for it to have an average of 29. So that's kind of using uh, mean or average to do things. Another way of doing this is using the median. Okay, so it says that Mr. Pickens decides to purchase a laptop with some extra discretionary funds. He checks online prices and found laptops at the following prices. 850, 790, 2400, 790, 836, 700, and 780. Because he used to be a math teacher, he discovers the mean is $1,000.22. Is this an accurate representation of the data? Okay, so does this accurately represent the data? Well, look at this number right here. If that's the mean, if we look at our other numbers, a lot of our numbers aren't like that. So I'm just going to say no. All right. And the reason for that, this 2400 is so much larger than any other laptop price. So it's so much larger than other laptop prices. So what that's doing is it's skewing our data. It's making it so that um, our mean is larger than it should be. So as a result, the mean in this case is not a good indication of the best price. So what I'm going to do instead is calculate out the median. So the first thing I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to write these in alph uh, alphabetical, well, basically, the numerical order. So I'm going to start with my smallest price. My smallest price is 700. So what I like to do as I'm writing these is I cross them off up top just so I can keep track of what I've gotten rid of. So I have 700, and then the next highest is 780, and then the next highest is 790, the next highest is 798. The next highest is 836. The next highest is 850. And then finally, our outlier is 2400. So to get the median, I'm going to want to kind of work my way in. So I'm going to start with the outliers. So I have this one and this one. So what I do to one side, I want to do the other and work my way in. So once I work my way in, I find that 798 is in the middle. So that means the median of my data is 798, which is much more central and much more realistic if we're looking at what makes a good price. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about Ms. Wagner. So now Ms. Wagner is going to go and try and find laptop prices, but she only found six. So those are the prices that she found, and it wants us to find the median. So to find the median, we're going to start again by writing it in numerical order. Well, thankfully, Ms. Wagner is smarter than Ms. Pickens. Mr. Pickens, you can tell him I said that even. And she put the numbers in numerical order for us. Why am I putting an addition sign in between them? I don't know, because we are just writing them out. Erase. There we go. Okay. Now, let's continue writing 798, 836, 850, and then that 2400. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross those off, cross those off. Now here we get to the point where there's two numbers in the middle. On the last problem that we did, there was only one number in the middle. But this time, there's two numbers. So since there's two numbers, we actually need to find the average of those two numbers. So I'm just going to take the average. So I'm going to do 798 plus 836 and divide that by 2. Okay, so when you do this in your calculator, just as a heads up, you either want to take the extra step to add those two numbers together and hit equals and then divide by 2 or put it in parentheses. Otherwise, if you just type it in like this with no parentheses, if you just type in 798 plus 836 divided by 2, it's going to take the 836 divided by 2 and then add 798. So when you add those two together, and divide them by 2, you should get 817. So maybe check that in your calculator and make sure you got the same price that I did. 
So for this next piece, what we're going to do is we're going to be writing a frequency table. And so the chart that I actually have written here is incorrect. So we're going to have you actually go off of your note sheet to help us identify these. So these are already in numerical order. So what we're going to do is we're going to write each number and how many times it showed up. Again, I'm going off of your worksheet, not off of what's written on here. So the problem is saying that transportation to and from work are considered essential expenses. That makes sense, right? In order to work, you need to get to work, which costs money. So Ms. Fearing would like to reduce the expense by biking to work. She found different prices for bikes online. So we want to find what would be an average good price of a bike. Because so we don't want to go too cheap because then the quality won't be great. Okay, so here, so if we have the price of $250, if you look on your sheet, that's going to show up two times. For the price of $275, when you look at your sheet, that's going to show up four times. The price of $280 shows up once. The price of $290 shows up twice. The price of 310 shows up five. The price of 315 shows up six. The price of 320 shows up one time. 325 shows up three times. Again, all I'm doing is looking at each of the numbers and identifying how many times it shows up on the list. And we are going to use a frequency table to help us identify what the best price would be. So we're going to look for that mean price. 350 is going to show up three times. And then we're going to use this to help us figure out our total. So the cool thing about setting it up in a frequency table, first of all, is to get for our average what we divided by, all we have to do is add down the frequency column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add down this column right here, and that's going to give me the frequency. So when I add the 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus all the way down, that's going to give us 30. So that's going to be 30. So now how do we use that to get the mean? So here it says product. Well, what do I mean when I say product? What I mean is you're going to take the price and multiply it by how many times it shows up. So 250 times 2 is 500. 275 times 4 is 1,100. 280 times 1 is 280. 290 times 2 is 580. 310 times 5 is 1,550. 315 times 6 is 1,890. 320 times 1 is 320. 970, or sorry, 325 times 3 is 975. 330 times 1 is 330, 335 times 1 is 335, 340 times 1 is 340, and 350 times 3 is 1050. So now when it says total, I'm going to add all of those together. So I'm going to take 50 plus 1100 plus 280 plus 508 all the way down. And when I do that, I get 9250. So to when you're using a frequency table, in order to take the average, you're just going to take, so when you're using a frequency table, the average or the mean is just going to be your product total divided by the frequency total. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take 9,250 and divide it by 30. And when I do that, I get $300.08 or $8.33. So that would be about the bike price that Ms. Fearing should pay if she wants to get around the average price. So that is all I have for you guys today, and let me know if you need help on your assignment.